Welcome everybody to my build video. In this build video I'm gonna show you two PvP setups for a stem blade for the Merkmire patch. Both of these setups are gonna be very meta and are gonna be very strong for a medium stem blade. So the first setup I'm gonna show you is a very standard setup, basically a shackle breaker and bone pirate. But what I changed is that I'm gonna run a mold for the next patch. Due to the major expedition and shield changes in Merkmire patch, we're gonna face a very tanky meta with people stacking up to 30k, 33k resistances. <laughs> and therefore I'm gonna go with a mall. I'm even gonna go Spriggan for my uh, next build. And um, after the testing, mall is, is very strong, even for low resistance targets like at 18k uh, resistance. It already outperforms uh, the greatsword. So I'm running a Shacklebreaker Mole Infused Disease Enchant on my front bar and a Shacklebreaker Bow uh, Infused uh, Weapon Damage Enchant on my back bar. Um, my jewelry looks like this it's uh, all Bone Pirate uh, jewelry, one infused weapon damage, uh, one infused weapon damage, and one robust stamina recovery. Uh, my armor pieces are uh, all all big pieces are uh, triset, and all small pieces are maximum stamina. I'm running full impen besides two pieces. Two of my pieces are well fitted, and I'm running valid ref six one six medium because I just love the sustain. I just uh, love the stem recovery and the dodge roll reduction is just so great and one heavy because of uh, a little bit more health and a little bit more of tankiness. Now I'm running Veladraf because uh, I absolutely love the set in open world NBGs. It's not as reliable as uh, other monster sets but if it hits a target it's definitely gonna one shot somebody. But yeah 70% of the time Veladraf isn't gonna hit and if if you're okay with that, then go for it. Valid Drift is really fun, because if the proc hits, then it's gonna do a lot of damage. But if you're not a fan of uh, lucky games, then you can go with Balorg. Balorg is a very great offensive set as well. It's very reliable. Um, at 100 ultimate in cap, it's gonna give you 200 weapon damage. And the great thing about Balorg is that it's not it's not gonna only increase uh, your damage after the ultimate, it's also gonna increase the damage of your ultimate. Therefore, if you uh, hit an in-cap with 500 ult, you're gonna get uh, 1000 weapon damage for your in-cap and after your in-cap. And also this weapon damage is gonna increase your healing, so that's great as well. But if you're not a fan of neither of these um, offensive monster sets, you can go with Bloodspawn. It's just a great monster set. It has an offensive component, it has a sustain component, it has a uh, defensive component. It's overall the best monster set for really every class. You cannot go wrong with it. Mm. The food I'm running is Dubious Cameron because of a Bone Pirate. The Pots I'm gonna run are tri -step. they give you more sustain for uh, all of your resources. And uh, you can also use your tri -step pots as a form of burst skill for when you're low or whatever. You can also save up these pots when uh, playing uh, against another stem blade and if he tries to burst you down and when he gets you a little bit low you can pop that tri -step pot and you're back up uh, almost full health with your rally and everything. I'm not running a vampire uh, because I think that vampire is completely suicidal uh, because of how many people run Dawnbreakers and fire them, which is just really suicidal to run any stage of vampire. And um, I don't see vampire as uh, as any good of a uh, of a uh, disease or whatever because it you only really get that undeath passive and more recoveries passive uh, you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna get a vampire for the darks uh, for the dark stalker passive because you won't be crouching in any of your fights anyway 
and the Mundus the one running is the Warrior. So the next setup uh, I plan to run for the next patch is a little bit more offensive. Your heals are gonna get a little bit uh, worse by about uh, 1k tooltip. But the, uh, but the setup does way way more damage, especially against tanky targets. So the set I'm running is Shacklebreaker on my body. Again, all big pieces are triset, all small pieces are uh, maximum stamina, and I run two well fitted and the rest impen. 6-1. I'm running again a Spriggan Mole on my front bar because of how the calculations work. So basically, so it's base armor of my target minus a major factor buff, then comes the penetration of my mole, and after comes my Spriggan and CP penetration. Therefore, a mole with Spriggan is still gonna be good and is gonna outperform uh, the Shacklebreaker uh, setup in terms of damage. Um, this Spriggan setup already does more damage than uh, Shacklebreaker Bone Pirate setup, even without the Master's Bow I'm, uh, I have on my back bar. If you proc the Master's Bow on your back bar, the setup is gonna do a lot, a lot more damage than the Shaker Breaking Bone Pirate setup, but it has worse healing. You have to deal with it if you want to play it. So the things I'm running is a Springing Mole Infused Disease Enchant. Uh, you don't have to run Disease Enchant. Disease, disease Enchant is great for, for basically against every character out there, besides tanky characters. If you really aim to hit those uh, tanky stem decays or tanky stem or whatever, like a truck, then you would um, go with Oblivion damage and chant. Oblivion damage just does so much, so much more damage against those tanky builds. But what it doesn't work against is shielded targets, because if you hit them with your Oblivion damage, it's just gonna, it's just gonna hit their HP bar, which is underneath the shields. And basically they're just gonna heal up within a millisecond and that's it, you didn't do any any sort of damage to them. Therefore disease uh, enchant is gonna be better against shielded targets because it adds burst on to the shields to help you burst down these shields. So yeah, um, a Spriggan infused mole um, disease enchant on my front bar and on my back bar a master's bow infused weapon damage. My jury looks like this. Uh, Spriggan, Necklace, all, all Spriggan Jewelry, um, Infused Weapon Damage, Infused Stamina Recovery, and one Robust Stamina Recovery to get uh, the Sustain up a little bit more. Mm, you can run Infused Weapon Damage if you're already comfortable with the Sustain you're already having, but I like to over-sustain my builds uh, by quite a lot. So again, you don't have to run Valor Drift, it's just uh, my my monster set of choice because I really really love it. Now most of the people are gonna compare Twice Max Serpent to Spriggan and are gonna ask me why I do not run Twice Max Serpent instead of Spriggan because it gives me more penetration but there are two basic uh, reasons of why I'm not running TFS and that's that is that uh, TFS needs time to build up even with poison injection on your target and poison status effect it's gonna be still not a lot of time to build up, but it's still gonna be, it's still, it's still gonna require time to build up, and basically you cannot just go in and burst your target right away. Mm. And also, um, TFS has a weapon crit component. I think it's, it's the fourth uh, uh, fourth piece uh, bonus that is uh, weapon critical, and I just really really hate weapon critical on any on any set, because it's a shitty offensive stat, it's a shitty defensive stat, because of how much impen people run already. Now my skills look like this. On my front bar, Relentless Focus, Surprise Attack, Rally, Mass Hysteria, Leeching Strikes, and Incap. On my back bar is gonna be Shadow Image, Poison Injection, Vigor, Shadowy Disguise, Shuffle, and soul siphon. Soul siphon because I really love the heal if if I'm in a situation where uh, multiple people people are focusing me down I just cannot heal back up I'm just gonna pop this get a uh, roll dodge and try to escape with my cloak it's a very strong heal you shouldn't uh, underestimate that it saved me from so many situations it's crazy I'm running glitching strikes on my front bar 
because it gives me more uh, maximum magicka because of the passive and uh, this magicka flute um, gives me at around I don't know um, 1.5k more max magicka it's crazy and leeching strikes really makes me run uh, low recovery setups as well also leeching strikes um, makes me able to stay in fights a little bit longer because of the healing and I can just reset fights way easier because um, I pop a leeching, uh, leeching strikes, I get into combat, um, I'm trying to burst down multiple targets, I get 1-2 kills off and I see that my uh, stamina is really low and I, uh, I'm getting pressured, therefore I'm gonna go back into cloak, pop my leeching strikes and there you go, my stamina is back up and I can uh, get back into the game. Mm, relentless focus is one of the skills you're gonna play around, it does stupid amounts of damage if you hit it, right? In Merc Mario patch is gonna be a little bit more delayed uh, because of the minimal travel time, but you should manage to still play around the skill. Uh, Shadow Image is one of your best skills on a Nightblade. It makes this, it's one of the skills that makes Stamblade that strong as it is. A good Stamblade will play around his Shadow Image and uh, Cloak so good to the point where he's gonna be uncatchable. Basically a Stamblade who runs Shadow Image and uh, Shadowy Disguise um, can never be killed if he doesn't want to, by nobody really. No, I would, not even Zex can kill you if you play around your mobility well. That's how strong Shadow Image is, you have to learn to play around this skill if you want to be a good Stamblade. And Poison Injection is acting as my passive execute because I do not run my ex I do not run any execute on my front bar anymore. Therefore, I'm running I'm running Poison Injection on my back bar. It's a great execute. It's passive, so I don't have to deal um, with applying it at 25%. It's just gonna take for like three to four k at execute, and it's crazy. Also, the initial damage um, scales off of your target's missing health. The stats of my uh, Bone Pirate Shackle Breaker setup look like this. Uh, 2.7k stem recovery, uh, 3.5k weapon damage. My physical penetration you can see is 20% plus uh, 2980. Uh, 37k stamina. Um, maximum health is 70.6k, that's gonna be around 23k in uh, Cyrodiil to 24k. And 15k maximum magic, that's, that is a lot, a lot of maximum magicka, a lot of uh, magicka sustain. My Spriggan stats look like this. 2.6k uh, stamina recovery, um, almost 55k maximum stamina, the same health and magicka pool, 3.3k um, weapon damage, but as you can see here is uh, 6k physical penetration, and I'm sorry I didn't have my mole. 20% plus 6.3k uh, physical penetration. You can run more weapon damage inside of this one. Uh, inside of this one standard recovery glyph, as I said before, but uh, that is uh, how I'm gonna run it. So yeah, thank you everybody for watching. If you have any questions uh, regarding these builds, uh, post them down below in the comment section. And yeah, see ya.